Hello, students. This is Mrs. Dalton. I'm about to read Chapter 1 in Buddy by M.H. Holong. Hopefully, you viewed the YouTube trailer of the book by now and also read the story elements notes as well as the Dear Students letter. I'm not enabling webcam because I would like you to follow along as I read using the digital version of the text. As I read, you will notice that I highlighted key characters' names. After reading chapter one, I will direct you to the chapter one notes and the stop and jot question, which you will answer at the end. Okay, let's get ready to go on a journey with little T, his family, and Buddy. Buddy, Chapter One. We found Buddy in the middle of St. Rock Avenue at 845 on a Sunday morning. That's the way Grandpa T would start this story. It was early April, he'd say, the spring of 2005. Is that so? Somebody else would say. It's a fact, Grandpa T would say. And then he would nod his head. I'm going to tell you a story about a dog, a three-legged dog, and a little black boy with no more sense than God gave a grasshopper. But Grandpa T ain't telling this story. I'm telling it. My name is Tyrone Elijah Roberts, just like my daddy and Grandpa T before him. Everybody calls daddy. T Jr. Everybody calls me Little T. So this story starts up in the car. We're on our way to church. It's hot in the car and we're crowded. Daddy's driving. And Mama's sitting in the front seat fanning herself. I'm squeezed in between them and looking at my Game Boy. I'm about to make it to the next level. My little sister's in the back playing the fool with the baby. She's shaking these big old plastic keys in front of his face and saying, grab them. Come on, baby Terrell, you can do it. And Grandpa T is sitting beside the baby seat, leaning back with his mouth open like he's sleeping. But he ain't sleeping. He's just gone someplace he goes when he don't like where he is. We need a bigger car, T. Jr., Mama says. Daddy don't say nothing. Little T is almost 13 years old. Pretty soon, his feet are going to be sticking out the front window. Daddy still don't say nothing. And when Tanya and Terrell both get bigger, it's going to be way too crowded in this old car. I already said, Daddy starts up, we'll go looking when I get that increase at work. It don't help to bring it up now. Mama casts her eye at Daddy. Then she sighs. It's just so hot, she says, and it's only April. Daddy nods, and I miss my shot, and it's game over. We're riding by the tomato man. It's too early for good tomatoes. But he's out there selling other stuff, just like he does every Sunday morning. What he's got for sale today, Mama says. Daddy leans forward a little bit and says, sign says collard greens. I don't want any collard greens, Mama says. And then all of a sudden, Daddy slams on the brakes and Mama screams and I'm bending forward toward the dashboard. Mama's arm slams into my chest and those plastic keys come flying over the seat and smack the back of my head and the baby starts crying and Grandpa T sits up straight and says something 
I can't write down in this story. Then the whole world still. We're sitting in the hot car and the baby's crying and mama finally says, what was that, T. Junior? And daddy says, I think I hit a dog. Daddy climbs out of the car first. He opens the door and it creaks like it's going to fall off, but it don't. He looks up toward the front of the car. Oh, Lord, he says. And I'm crawling out his door while mom is grabbing at my leg saying, wait. But one thing I ain't doing is waiting. It's a black dog. A black dog with long, straight fur. He's laying flat on the street. His tail is stretched out behind him. And he's still as a stone. I kneel down in the street right beside him. Be careful, Daddy says. But he don't stop me. Hey, boy, I say. I reach out my hand toward the dog real slow, and touch his head just a little bit. Easy now, easy, I say. The dog twitches, and then all of a sudden he lifts up his head and looks straight at me. He's alive, Daddy shouts, and everybody starts piling out the car to come see. That dog don't take his eyes off me. He's looking at me like he's wondering who I am. And I'm looking right back. His eyes are soft and big and dark, dark brown with black going all around the rims. He's got a sprinkling of white fur across his forehead and down the top of his nose, sort of in the shape of a heart. So students, do you notice the bonding, the connection that's taking place between little T and this dog? The dog doesn't take his eyes off of him. He's looking at little T, little T's looking at him. And little T notices all the features of the dog. Everybody's crowding around, but me and that dog are still looking at each other. You see how they're connecting? They're still looking at each other. He's got a long, thin scar over one of his eyes. The fur around the scar goes every which way, making him look like he's got a buck moth caterpillar stuck on his forehead. Under his chin and down his throat, the fur is mostly white. One front paw is supposed to be white too, but it look, it's so dirty, it looks almost brown. He sure is dirty, Mama says. She's standing there with her hands on her hips and Tanya's hanging on her like she might fly away. Grandpa T bends down and looks at the dog and says, his hind legs broke. How do you know that? Daddy says, I use my eyes, Grandpa T says, and points. And sure enough, anybody can see the top back leg is kind of covering it up. But once you look, you can see the other back leg is bent the wrong way. And there's something white sticking out through the fur. That dog's leg ain't just broke. It's broke bad. I'm rubbing the dog's head now. He started panting like nobody's business, laying there on the hard street in the hot sun where the shadow from the oak trees ain't even close to him. I can feel the hard bone under his soft fur and the way his skin moves a little when I push my hand over the round top of his head. 
his eyes stretch open and I curl my fingers into the thick fur on his neck. I bend down and touch the top of the dog's head with my nose. He smells like dog sweat and old wet leaves and dry dust all at the same time. Be careful, little T, Mama says. Ain't nothing to worry about, Grandpa T says. That's one gentle dog. You can't tell that, Daddy says. He's still half knocked out. Grandpa T just shrugs his shoulders. What's your name? I whisper to the dog. He sticks up his tongue and licks my chin. I must taste good because he does it twice. Then he shifts a little and his broke leg moves and he yelps and starts to wiggle like he wants to get up. Easy, boy, I say again. Easy. And he settles right down and lays still. What are we going to do, Daddy? I say. Daddy's standing there wiping his face with a tissue. Grandpa T is leaning on the side of the car with his arms crossed over his chest. And Mama looks over at the tomato man down the road. Whose dog is this? She yells. Tomato man standing up under his umbrella. He's looking at us like we're a movie show. Ain't nobody's, he hollers back. Just a street dog. But who feeds him? Mama yells. Tomato man shrugs up his shoulders like, you know, I don't know. Mama looks down at the dog. Doesn't look like anybody feeds him, she says. The baby's crying in the car. Tanya's twisting her feet in her sandal shoes and wrinkling up Mama's dress in her hand. And Mama looks at her watch and says, we're going to be late for church. He needs a doctor, Grandpa T says. We can't pay a doctor for no dog, Daddy says. But somebody's got to help him, Grandpa T says. Well, we can't take him with us, Mama says. There's not enough room in the car. We can't just leave him here, neither, Daddy says. I'm still kneeling down by the dog. Now he's resting his head in the palm of my hand, and I'm thinking, that my hand is going to smell just like dog. Just like this dog. So students, do you see how little T and this dog are connecting, bonding? The dog is resting his head in the palm of little T's hand. I look up at all those people fussing and I don't even think about it. All of a sudden, I just blurted out, there'll be plenty of room, I say, if I walk, meaning little T is willing to walk to church and put the dog in the car in his place. Every one of them stops talking. They all look down and stare at me. Put the dog in the back, I say. Tanya can take my seat. Somebody at church will know what to do. You're going to walk to church, Daddy says. He's not old enough to do that, Mama says. This neighborhood, how old are you, boy? Grandpa T says. 13 next October, I say. I was picking cotton when I was your age, Grandpa T says. He turns to Mama. I think he can walk five blocks to church. T. Jr., put that dog in the car. Standing in this heat ain't good for my heart. When Grandpa T. says what to do, everybody does it.
So students, it looks like Grandpa T has the authority and the say in this family. And it also looks like he's sticking up for little T. Mama's mouth is all screwed up like she's sucking a lemon, but she don't say nothing. She buckles Tanya into the front seat and sticks a pacifier in the baby's mouth so he stops crying. Okay, dog, Daddy says. I'm going to pick you up and you ain't going to bite me. We got a deal? That dog's looking at Daddy like he ain't too sure about this deal. Daddy squats down and slowly starts to work his arms up under the dog. Grandpa T's helping with the broke leg. The dog twists his head back and forth like he's trying to look at both of them at the same time. When Daddy lifts him up off the ground, the dog makes a noise like a squeaky toy and then a yelpy sound. Daddy makes a sound too, like, oh, he's bony, Daddy says, but he's heavy enough. That dog is whimpering and wiggling like he wants to get away. But then Daddy hustles him into the car. The dog takes up all of Tanya's seat and more, his front feet passing up under the baby seat and his head almost laying in the baby's lap. That dog is looking at baby Terrell, but I can't stop looking at the dog. At first, I think his big old eyes are sad and scared because he's hurt and maybe because he's hungry. Next, I think they're glad and happy because he's out of the sun and maybe because he thinks we're going to feed him. Then he settles his head down and turns his eyes on mama. You watch that dog with my baby, Grandpa T, mama says. If he even takes a little nip, I'll throw him out on the street, broke leg and all. He ain't going to bite baby Travell, I say. Just look at his eyes. Mama gives me a look. You don't know anything about that dog, she says. I know that much, I say. Hmm, Mama says. Then they're all in the car and the door slams shut. Daddy leans out the window. Keep on walking down the street, son, until you get to St. Claude. Turn left and go on until you see the church. We'll be inside looking for you. I nod. They drive off. What are you going to call that dog? Tomato Man hollers. And what makes you think I'm going to call him anything? Tomato Man laughs and picks up his newspaper. I know what I know is all he says. And that's chapter one, my students. Okay, so they're on their way to the church and the dog is in the car and little T is going to walk to the church. And we're now going to look at Buddy chapter one notes. The setting is April, 2005, and it's a Sunday morning and St. Rock Avenue, that's where they were driving and that's where Daddy, right? T. Jr. hit the dog. The characters that were introduced in this chapter are the dog, which later will be named Buddy. We have Grandpa T, who sticks up for little T and makes the decisions in the family. We have Tyrone Elijah Roberts, and that's the main character who's telling the story. His, he is referred to as Little T. You have Daddy who's called T. Jr., Mama. You have little T's sister. Her name is Tanya. And the baby brother, which is called Baby Travell. And then you have the tomato man who was selling produce on the street, off, off, like at the highway. 
So here are the important points to chapter one. You have the plot. One, little T's family is driving to church. Two, daddy hits a dog. Three, little T begins to connect with the dog. Four, little T offers to walk to church so that the dog can be taken to the church in the already overcrowded car. And five, Tomato Man asks Little T what he is going to name the dog. Now, why would Tomato Man ask that? What does Tomato Man know? Is Tomato Man thinking that maybe the family will keep the dog? Because if you name someone a baby or a dog, you know, a person, it indicates like a connection. So this is what you call foreshadowing. So the author is giving you a hint of what may happen later on in the text. So the tomato man is asking Little T what he's going to name the dog. This gives us a hint that maybe Little T is going to keep and name the dog. But we have a conflict in the chapter. We have external conflict. A, a conf external is when it happens outside of the character. The first external conflict is Mama wants a bigger car. Okay, she understands it's getting crowded. You know, you've got her and you have Daddy T Jr. and you have Little T and you have Baby Terrell and you have Tanya and Grandpa. And she's arguing with Daddy. So it's it's between Mama and Daddy. So it's external. But Daddy says they don't have the money. Not yet, you know, to buy a bigger car. And the second external conflict is little t wants to walk to church but mama says no so it's like this conflict that little t has with mama so it's it's a conflict between one character and another character and that's why it's external but there is a resolution there's a conflict resolution grandpa overrules mama's decision and allows little t to walk to church and he gives some evidence for this because as grandpa says I was picking cotton when I was your age. So grandpa made the final decision. Mama didn't make the rule. Grandpa overruled mama's decision. So you're going to answer the stop and jot question, which is posted on Google Classroom. It's in the form of a Google form. It's a quiz. And you'll answer using evidence from the text. Describe how little T is bonding with the dog. Okay, students, I really do hope you enjoyed um, the chapter one reading of Buddy by M.A. Charlong. I'm doing my best. Review the notes and answer the first stop and jot question. And thank you for joining me on this journey. Bye-bye.